Hello friends and welcome to another sweet project. Today I will be showing you how to make some homemade lollipops. I will show you a basic version and a version that will make you work hard but the results will speak for itself. These are great to share with your family, work colleagues and even strangers or even share it with that one vegan friend we all have. Let's begin. In this video, there are a few golden rules that you must follow. The most important golden rule when making lollipops is safety. Be careful as you will be working with a hot sugary syrup. If you are not careful, you can burn yourself, much like how I have burnt myself in the past because I was distracted in the kitchen and I'm a very easily distracted person. The second most important golden rule is temperature, so you'll need a thermometer. So on standby, I have a digital probe thermometer, but you can use a sugar thermometer if you have that. The third most important golden rule is flavor. Choosing the flavor will determine the color, the mold you set them in, and the decoration or garnish. The flavor that I have chosen is one of my favorites, and it's too good for children. That's why I didn't mention children when I said you could share with people. I love the flavor of cherry blossom or sakura. I have made a few different things in the past with sakura. Do check them out on my channel, or you can follow the link on the top right corner. I managed to get this imported from Japan. This is a little expensive, but worth the try. Let's have a taste. Such intensity and freshness. This is the real deal. Or you can use a cocktail mixer like the one I have. This is just as good and it is also budget friendly. I have decided to mix both to get a uniform construct of the flavor of Sakura. In total, we will need 90 grams of flavoring. So in goes 30 grams of the expensive stuff and then we need 60 grams of the other stuff. Like I said, the flavor can be anything. Don't limit yourself to what I like. There is a brand that I use a fair amount in the kitchen. You can use them for drinks, dessert, cakes and other treats. The brand is called Monin. Don't worry, they didn't sponsor me to promote their brand. These are the few flavors in my kitchen arsenal, which are banana, jasmine, this is such an amazing flavor, guava, melon, this is Jessica's favorite, and lychee or lychee. And a few more others that I have are blueberry, violet, and hibiscus, two other great floral flavors. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get cherry blossom or sakura from Monin, but it does exist in the world. Take a medium sized pot and pour in 180 grams of water. And then the next thing you will need is some light corn syrup. This is the base for the lollipop to help it stabilize. This one has some vanilla flavoring, which isn't a problem as vanilla is rather neutral and is universal. Pour in 180 grams of light corn syrup. Corn syrup is a common ingredient in many hard candy recipes because it is an invert sugar. Invert sugar inhibits the formation of sugar crystals and provides a smooth texture to hard candy, caramel, and other cooked sweets. Corn syrup acts as an interfering agent in this recipe. It contains long chains of glucose molecules that tend to keep the sucrose molecules in the lollipop syrup from crystallizing. To summarize, this helps it from not crystallizing badly. If you don't have corn syrup, you can use liquid glucose. Next, pour in 600 grams of caster sugar. All right, since we have already established the flavor, I mentioned to you that the base flavor can influence the mold. We have over here some cherry blossom lollipop silicone molds. I am amazed at the detail and I want the lollipop to capture the details of this silicone mold. This mold came with some sticks. So make sure you prepare your molds before making the syrup. It is important that you are ready in your final stages. If you are not making sakura lollipops, you can get a basic or generic lollipop mold such as this one, which is just as equally good. Another element that I mentioned when choosing the flavor, since cherry blossom flowers have a pink hue, I have desired to go the extra mile by getting some pink luster spray. Give the can a good shake and let's spray one of the molds. Be generous when spraying as you want all the details to be covered. Give the mold a wipe of the excess spray. 
It is important that you prepare the molds before starting the syrup because once things start to happen, they can happen really fast and you need to be prepared. Leave that to one side for now. Take the pot over to the stove and turn on the stove to medium to high. We want the syrup to boil. When making candy of this nature, it is best to keep a brush with water on the side to then brush the sides of the pot. Brushing the side of the pot will ensure a clean pot so that sugar crystals don't form on the side. If sugar crystals form on the side, it can lead to bad crystallization. I will show you what I mean later. So brush every couple of minutes. Now, the other influence after choosing the flavor is color. Remember, cherry blossoms are pink, so I'm going to use some red food coloring. I won't be using too much, just enough to make it slightly pink. I don't want it to be overly red, resulting in an overly sickly color. So just to recap, I have my molds ready and I'm on standby. Just a reminder, this is the one with the pink luster spray. Here is the cherry blossom syrup mixture and in it are five good drops of red food coloring. Give that a mix so that we are even more prepared for later. The color of the syrup is turning a light amber. We are now at about the hard ball stage. Hard ball is between 122 to 130 degrees Celsius. The stage that I'm looking for is hard crack which is between 146 to 155 degrees Celsius. I want the syrup to reach the highest part of the stage, which is 155 degrees Celsius. The reason why I want it at its highest is because when I pour in the cherry blossom syrup, it will cool it down slightly, but still remain in the bracket of hard crack. But if I just bring it to 146 degrees Celsius, by the time I pour in the cherry blossom syrup, it would have lost a few degrees. There we are, 154.2, which is good enough, as the remaining heat in the pot will bring it close enough to 155 degrees Celsius. Pour in the syrup with the food coloring. Use a wooden spoon and stir. Do be very careful when doing this. You want to avoid any splashes and any steam or vapor coming off from the pot. My advice is don't do this with children or pets around. Otherwise, you will have to watch the syrup and the children or the pets at the same time. Remember, we don't want to burn ourselves or the children or the pets. Basically do this with nobody near you at this point. Once the syrup with the coloring has been evenly mixed around, firmly and at a good pace, distribute the syrup into the molds. I'm using a large tablespoon and one scoop can fill the mold. Now you can let them cool at room temperature. So, let me show you an alternate method of dispensing the syrup. What I have over here is called a sauce gun or a funnel dispenser. It comes with various nozzle sizes to control the flow. The trick with using this for this project is to place it in the oven first. Yes, you heard me right, placing it in the oven first. My oven is set at 100 degrees Celsius. The reason being is that this thing is metal and it is cool. If I were to place the cherry blossom syrup in it, it will set around the sides of the cool dispenser. However, if the dispenser is hot or warm enough, it wouldn't shock the syrup. Just remember, if you're going to use this, this is also going to be hot. So you are going to need some oven gloves. And following the same principle, when the syrup is ready with the color and the flavor, pour it into your warmed up sauce gun. And there you go. I am now speed filling the silicone mold with the sauce gun. So when I started this video, I mentioned about how the flavor can shape the molding decision, the color, and now for the decoration or garnish. I have also decided to go above and beyond. I have a small packet of preserved cherry blossom in salt. I will be making potpourri. Essentially what I'm making is dried flower petals. We have to take care of the petals since there is salt and the stems are attached. Pour all of the content of the packet into some cold water. Move the flowers around so that the salt can sink to the bottom. Take the flowers out of the water and allow them to be dried for a little bit. Look at all of the collected salt at the bottom. You can throw that away or you can drain the water and save the salt for another project. I will be using a pair of tweezers to take apart each petal as I have rather chunky fingers. I have discovered that by submerging the petals in some water, they float freely apart from each other. Open up the petal and let it stick to the side of a small bowl, then pour out the water. 
you are then left with a fully opened up petal. Let that dry on the side of the bowl and repeat the process until you get a lot of them. To store it, place it in after it has dried in between some baking paper and in the middle of a thick book, ready for the future to garnish your next cherry blossom project. So coming back to the lollipops, let's place on the top of the lollipop a dried petal for that extra wow factor. This will help give the audience a hint of the flavor before they put it in their mouth. I decided to make some with and some without. Let them set for at least a few hours. While waiting, you can check out my other videos on my channel. After it has set, let's take one out from where I sprayed the pink luster. Will you look at that? It perfectly captured the shape and look that I wanted. The shimmer and the way the light bounces off the lollipop makes the details pop out even more. This to me is fucking sexy. Wait until you try it. It's even more sexy. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of one without the luster and one with. Let me show you what happens when you don't bring the syrup to the correct temperature. Unwanted crystallization will happen and will cause the lollipop to go cloudy and grainy. After all, we want it to be shiny, see-through and smooth to eat, or at least that's what I want. All that's left to do is to wrap them and then give them away. Well, don't give them all away, just some. Let's take a look at the other shapes that we also did. I love the detail in the spiral. The spiral is my next favorite because of the contrast and definition of the design. Here is a petal with the lollipop. Let me show you what it looks like when I pass a light through it. I place one of my filming lights in front of the camera and let's have a look. There is one thing to note you will notice many, many super tiny bubbles when shining a light through it, which gives you this two-sided look. The reason being is that bubbles rise to the top and has set that way. This just adds another level to the way it has set. This is mostly only visible when you shine a light through it. The one on the left is with the pink luster, which doesn't allow as much light to pass through, whereas the one on the right, which doesn't have anything, allows for more light to pass through. This one is with bad crystals, which totally looks unappetizing. So just as a recap, the first one is with pink luster, the second one is without anything, and the third one is with bad crystals. I also decided to make just candy as I ran out of lollipop molds, but I still had some more syrup in the pot. This is a basic rectangle silicone mold with a petal. Dare I say it again, this looks fucking sexy. I think YouTube is gonna shut me down for swearing too much. But can you excuse myself for looking at something like this? This thing right here reminds me of the mosquito in amber in Jurassic Park. Don't worry, these things won't turn into dinosaurs and kill you. Now for the last thing to add to my collection is this lollipop stand. Assemble it with a screwdriver and test it out. This is how it will look like. And there you have it guys, cherry blossom or sakura lollipops. Don't eat too much of these, it can ruin your teeth. Do let me know what you think of this video and what flavors would you try. Let me know down in the comment area. If you enjoyed that, hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and until next time, stay sweet guys and bye for now.